Today our question is, what is the future of blockchain in retail and CPG supply chains? Our facilitator is Matthew Leotine. He is a business consultant and a professor at the University of Illinois at Chicago. Hello, Matt. Hey, good morning, Gene. How are you? I'm well. So your theme number eight, persuading the retail value chain. I'm so curious. What is this about? Well, uh, here what we're looking at is how do we get the momentum to really initiate a pilot which could drive towards mass adoption of blockchain based solutions. And so here we looked at how do you orchestrate this whole thing? Who should take the lead? Who should be the champion of this? Should it be the producers? Should it be the distributors, the retailers? And how do you motivate the players in this to go ahead and take the lead towards a successful implementation? Feels a little bit like a hot potato game, right? <laughs> Everybody. Exactly. That's exactly right. Who's, who's going to hold the, Who's going to hold the potato? Who passes it on? But hopefully, you know, you have somebody who really plays a pervasive role in the whole thing. So, a great conversation with a great group of panelists. Anything to add to this? We had some new recent members joining us here. I believe Keith and James and Patrick, and we've had some of people who've been with us uh, throughout the whole panel, and we've got some really great input from these people. We have a really well-balanced field of experts in this panel. Great. I was looking at your executive summary, which we're looking at here. Boy, there's a lot going on here. So unpack these uh, four key points. Yeah, throughout this whole discussion, we had many, many areas, many topics that we covered, but we ended up with these four assertions one key point here was that retailers will play a prominent role in getting this thing orchestrated. I think it's all about the retailers because they deal with the customers. So we have to somehow exploit their sphere of influence with the customers towards an adoption of this uh, technology. And then secondly, we also recognize that a lot of this is focused on the potential for new business models. That's really going to be the motivating factor. Uh, looking at cost savings is always definitely a plus, but you have to look down the road a little bit for new types of business models that can generate growth and revenue. And then another assertion that we made was the fact that uh, because of all the uncertainty surrounding blockchain technology, there could be uh, great opportunities for failure. And so given the fact that people are going to be investing money in such a venture, you want to reduce the opportunity for failure throughout the whole effort. And in order to guarantee that, the last bullet item is making sure that you have a clear vision of what you want to achieve throughout the whole process. What kind of business model, what kind of rewards do you want to achieve, what the end game is going to be. So these are the four areas that we kind of uh, touched upon throughout our discussion. Let's get into key point number one, which in some ways is really, uh, this is such a big tipping point issue, but trust is really the thing here, right? Who starts this? Is it the retailer, the producer, the distributor, the buyer? Who is going to drive this train, right? Right, right. When you look at the current landscape, you have uh, the retailers who have a very, very strong sphere of influence in the marketplace, uh, the Walmarts, the targets of the world. And we could see firsthand how they're initiating pilots to adopt this technology into their retail operations. But then you have everybody else, uh, retailers who may not have the market influence, the market power. So what can they do? Well, here the panel thought that this is an opportunity for the producers to try to influence that segment of the retail market to see if they can influence them and motivate them and support them in adapting blockchain into their retail space. And one side you have the big players and on the other side, you have the big producers who both can generate the momentum in adopting these technologies into the marketplace. So then in key point number two, the potential for new business models and operational capabilities involving enhanced customer visibility of product providence will likely be the driving force. So what does this mean? Well, what this means is uh, providing greater transparency to the consumer. What we're saying here today is that Consumers no longer are focused on brand name, but they want to look more into what the product is versus uh, what the name of it is. And so what this means is giving them the ability to see the history of the product, where it came from, how it was produced, was it ethically sourced, was it responsibly sourced, does it have ingredients that are safe for them or that they prefer. And so this kind of uh, visibility 
is what consumers are looking for today. And so ultimately down the road, we're looking at business models and um, applications that can provide this kind of service to consumers. As a second byproduct of all this is the fact that as you require players throughout the supply chain to record their transactions on a blockchain, if you're, for example, requesting growers to track their progress of producing their raw material food products to the producers, if you require them to track that on a blockchain, there could be incentives built in using tokenization, tokenomics, and these kinds of practices to reward them and influence them. Ultimately, what that does is it improves food quality, improves food safety, it reduces waste, and it also can improve the shelf life of the product. And that could consequently lead to reduced costs and, and greater profits. So there's a lot of secondary benefits to this as well. So Matt, are you saying that there's a lot of skepticism regarding a brand's integrity? Do you think that's creeping into the marketplace? Is that what you're saying? People are questioning products more and more. And so in the old days, people would buy certain brand items based on the brand name. But today, because first of all, there's so many, there's just numerous, numerous millions and millions of brands out there. Consumers are no longer tagged to certain brand names. They're buying more on what the product is. And the value of creating this kind of transparency is to create trust between the consumer and the product for the non-brand name products, but also to reinstate trust in the brand name products as well, because the brand name companies are realizing that they're starting to lose market share to all these diverse other brands. And so by using these kinds of applications to basically uh, reinsure that kind of trust in their products, it can work for all kinds of brands. So uh, that's just another mechanism to, to reinstate trust with, and reconnect trust with the consumer. That's a really valuable point for brands to consider, right? Protecting Absolutely. their integrity. Exactly. Okay, let's get into key point number three. I was kind of surprised by this because mechanisms to reduce failure risk must be devised. Don't we have them already? Well, whenever you're dealing with a new technology, there's always a lot of uncertainty. And in blockchain, we have the same thing going on. There's still a lot of things that have to be proved in with blockchain. There's uh, still lack of standards, best practices, lack of regulation. And so we haven't seen that yet. And that also adds to the uncertainty. So if somebody's going to pilot something and uh, spend several years investing money into this, you want to take a low risk approach. So some of the methods that we talked about in our panel discussion was blockchain as a service is definitely a way to jumpstart an implementation in a low risk way because you don't have to invest in the infrastructure. And companies like Oracle are have already built uh, blockchain platforms that uh, companies could come in and use and develop their applications on in a low risk environment. And as these uh, applications, once they go into operation and they can transact in high volumes, then at that point you can make a decision whether or not you want to move off of cloud and create your own infrastructure or take another approach. So the technology risk can be reduced using BAAS, blockchain as a service. That's one thing the panel identified. But aside from the technology, there's also the project organization types of risks. And that is um, kind of talks about what we're relating to earlier, and that is the fact that you have to have many players involved in this. So it requires creating an ecosystem, corralling players together, be they suppliers, producers, distributors, retailers. Somebody needs to take the lead, create the ecosystem, be the anchor, and really use that ecosystem as a way of having the players have more skin in the game and spreading the risk. And that ultimately could reduce risk as well. So that takes us into uh, key point number four, a clear vision for such new models must be established. I guess it continue, vision is so important and so oftentimes overlooked, right? Yeah, exactly. Today we're seeing so many blockchain startups, everybody's going a different direction. And uh, what you want to do is you want to look at the end game, what kind of application, what kind of transparency, what kind of reward you want. Are you looking for more revenue, more sales? Are you looking to reduce costs? What form of revenue are you looking for? Are you looking to grow your market, grow your consumer base, the reward programs? So you need to identify you know, what, what, you, what you're looking for in terms of rewards and create a roadmap 
towards that end game. And the ecosystem that's created needs to agree on what that roadmap should be and what that vision should be. That's so powerful. That, that's so deep. I hope people spend some time to really go deep on what you just said because it's a f there's a few words there, but it, the impact is really powerful, right? Yeah, absolutely. This is how you know. This is how ventures fail and startups fail because of the lack of this vision. Yeah, and of course, maybe the blockchain would provide the credibility that would give the brand give it back its credibility, right? Right. You know, they're looking at blockchain as a way, and that's part of the thing that I was trying to say is that it could be the mechanism to provide that kind of transparency to the consumer, so that they can regain trust or gain new trust in the product. That's great. I love that. Okay. What a great conversation, Matt. Great, great, great bunch of panelists. Tell us about these three that really stood out for you. These three gentlemen were outstanding, uh, both Keith and Patrick. Uh, again, they were newcomers to the panel, but they produced a lot of good input from the business side and the retail aspects of it. And Sumanth has been with us all along as uh, traditionally provides some good technical input, some great technical ideas on implementations and caveats. And so uh, we were really blessed to have these three people as our top three experts. And I think they were blessed to have you as a facilitator. I think you did a great job <laughs> on this. Really, great job. Well, thanks. I appreciate that. It's been really great. Uh, this has been a great, great panel. Uh, we all learned a lot as well as uh, Oracle. And so, um, you know, we hope that we made a contribution to uh, both Oracle and to the field of blockchain. Yeah, I'm sure you did. Thank you. That is Dr. Matthew Leotine. He is a professor at the University of Illinois at Chicago. He's a consultant, a business leader, and obviously a great thought leader. And we appreciate you spending the time with us today, Matthew. Thanks so much. Appreciate it, Gene.